Hello and welcome to another fun and festive edition of A Splash of Paint brought to you in association with the SAA. So let's take a closer look at some of the colourful parcels of inspiration being unwrapped on today's sparkling programme. Versatile artist David Hyde demonstrates how to paint a lovely lavender landscape in today's Try Your Hand Up project. I'll be putting the finishing touches to the festive landscape that we started last week. Our resident bookworm Henry Malt pops in for a mince pie and a browse through another inspirational title available from the SAA Reference Library. And our very own pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore conjures up another great product to help you paint outdoors with no water pot and no spills. So it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Let's open up our selection box of artistic goodies and join versatile artist David Hyde as he demonstrates how watercolours can capture the beauty of a lovely lavender landscape. In part one of today's Try Your Hand Up project. Thank you, Matthew. Today I'm going to do a little watercolour painting with a building. Quite a complicated building in some ways, not a simple building. But to make it easy to paint, I'm not going to use any perspective at all. I've got the uh, building. This is the, um, one of the buildings at Norfolk Lavender, which is just off the A149 near Hunstanton. And it's a lavender farm. And uh, the main feature of this will be uh, this building in the background. Uh, I've got it drawn in, but I'm going to start with the sky, as I normally would. Now, in, in order to make this three-dimensional, I'm going to be using tone. But I also want it to look as though... Uh, it's in the sunshine. So I want a nice warm colour on here. And because I want to, ha to have a feeling of brightness on it, I'm going to paint my sky a medium colour. Okay, not too pale. So I want some strength on here so that the brightness of the building will eventually show against it. I'm just going to mix um, a wash to start this. Um, I use for washes these uh, uh, Da Vinci Cosmotop brushes because they're essentially squirrel, which is a, a good uh, hair for washes. And it makes a very inexpensive and affordable wash brush. That's probably a wee bit strong, so I'll put a bit more water with that. There's no need really to worry about these trees because they are going to be silhouetted against the sky. And so I can overpaint them. So you can just bring your sky wash down uh, below the tree line, but be careful not to overpaint the building. When you get near the building, you must take a bit more care and follow the line of the building because any blue on there is going to ruin the effect of uh, sunlight. So uh, work quickly across. I'm not wetting my paper this time, but you can uh, wet the sky if you prefer and put the, um, the uh, blue on more evenly. Just going to take that little bit off there before it dries. But I'm working left to right and I'm just picking up that edge so that it doesn't dry out too quickly. Okay, just taking that safely down into the tree line. Um, I'm past the building there, so I needn't worry. I'm just going to take that across. Don't worry if you leave little flicks of white. Never go back and try and uh, sort them out because it normally ends in a disaster with these things. And try and avoid doing what I'm doing, and that's running out of paint. I'm just going to quickly mix some more. Luckily, I'm just using cobalt blue for this. So it's not going to take too much time just to mix the same. Cool, look at that. It's pretty much the same tone as well. That's a, a bonus. I'm not going to go back and um, add that over the sky. I'm just going to leave that to dry like that. OK, now I'm working on an easel, so I've got a few little beads here and there. They can cause back runs if you're not careful because the paint above will dry and this wet paint will be drawn back up into it. So I'm just going to squeeze my brush and just take any, any beads off and that can dry. It may look a dark sky, but the effect of this will be to show the sunlight on the building. Okay, while we're talking about sunlight, when you're painting, you must always, with watercolour, 
uh, be sure where your lights are going to be. If you are not, and you don't make allowances for them early enough, you're likely to overpaint the lights, and your painting will look a little dull. So, one thing about light is your eye is drawn to the lightest part of the painting. Now, I want my eye to be drawn in through the lavender here to the building itself. So I want a nice light patch there that will contrast with the building and draw my eye to that place. So while the sky is drying, I'm going to mix um, a little... Uh, this is gamboge. And I use gamboge. It's, I've got two colours here that look the same. One's Indian yellow, which is nice and vibrant and very transparent. Gamboge is a similar colour, but it's much softer. Uh, but it's also transparent, so it, it mixes well. And I'm going to introduce a little green. I could simply use the cobalt blue, actually. So I'm going to start with yellow. Now, if you're painting grasses in sunlight, green is mixed with two colours, a yellow and a blue. Now, if you're trying to paint sunlight, blue is not a sunny colour. Yellow is a sunny colour. So you can remove the blue and your grasses will look much brighter. Um, that's because they're yellow. But the thing is, we're so tuned into greens that too much green in a landscape tends to spoil it. When you add a little green, I'm going to mix a little blue in with that yellow. That's a little sky blue, so it should match it. And I'm going to quickly paint up into that while that's still wet. But I'm not going to take that too far back. But your um, eye sees that as a bright green, hopefully, when we're done. It ignores the fact that it's yellow. Now, uh, my focal point is this part of the building here. So I can, with this green, just cool off this end here, and it'll draw your eye, it'll draw your eye into here. So basically what um, I'm saying with this thing about light and contrast is don't when you're painting, don't rely on seeing it in the, in the subject. Bear it in mind when you paint that in order to create a three-dimensional look and to draw your eye around your painting, you need to be aware of uh, the effect that colours and tones have. And that's what hopefully we'll see with this uh, picture. Now, I'm not painting these, obviously, because these are going to be the lavender and I don't want a, a greenish colour under here. And we'll come back to this uh, later in the, in the painting. I've overpainted a little bit of the lavender here and there. So I'm just going to dab out a little bit of that back there. And again, I've run out of paint, but it was just a little bit of gamboge, new gamboge, and some of my cobalt blue. Um, it's not so critical here because a slightly different mix is not going to make any difference at all. So grasses are grasses, so I'll take a little bit out there. Oh, I ought to bring that down just into this edge here. It's different colour a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. You'll see why later on. Okay, so we're nearly through the, um, the preliminary stages. What I want to do now is to put a wash on for the buildings. These are the light washes, and I want my wash lighter than the sky. So I'm going to uh, mix um, a, little, a little burnt sienna. I'll put it on that edge there, because I don't want it contaminated there, so I'll find a little space for it there. And I'm going to brighten it up with some orange. Okay, And now I'm going to dilute it, because I'm not sure of the strength of this yet because I haven't got my trees in. The thing with this is if you, if you decide to paint the building first in isolation, you are likely to overpaint it. So I'm just going to put a little toning wash in here. Yep, that should be okay. And it will work with this sky, hopefully. Now, I didn't want to paint the windows, so I'm just going to correct that. I'm just going to make sure my window frames, which are going to be white, are painted around. A little bit more water. Now, I'm going to have this roof blue, so I'm not going to paint that one. Uh, 
Um, I'm leaving, I'm not painting this colour over that roof because I'm going to paint the roofs two different colours. That's going to have a grey slate, okay, and this one is going to have a terracotta slate, so I can obviously paint this colour over that. I'll just bring that down quickly. That's going to be a, a, a shrub. Bring this down to the bottom. So that looks quite nice. The bl blue and orange always works together well in paintings, being complementary. So, And this is the lightest colour I intend to put on here, so you can put it everywhere, except the windows, of course, which need to be white, and it's better to leave the white rather than try and paint it over with um, an opaque gouache or acrylic. Last little bit. Last little bit around here. Okay, so that that now is set up um, to apply uh, the darks and start to bring it together. The darks are what eventually will make this painting work, but when you paint watercolour, as many of you will know, you keep, save the darks until later, because you can paint dark on top of light, but not the other way around. Fine, I'll put a barrel there. there. And just take that off there. Okay, fine. So we're about halfway through this painting now, so um, please join me later and we'll finish this painting off. Thanks, David. A stunning project. Hope you grow your artistic talent. We look forward to seeing part two later on in today's programme. Well, folks, time for a short break now, but join us in part two when I'll be demonstrating how to finish off last week's festive landscape. And our resident bookworm, Henry Malt, will be popping in for a mince pie and a browse through the SAA reference library for another great artistic read. See you soon.